Okay, so just continuing on from part five, so we can figure out Intune Android work profile. So the dynamic membership on that one, uh, that is down here under the Entra Admin Center. So from this screen, your identity, that brings you to here. We come under identity, you get all groups, look for our dynamic group. Now we can see here, there's still a little warning. We've got one member. All right. So that's my uh, Android device. I come to our Intune Admin Center, which from there is Endpoint Manager. Hit on Devices, go to Android. And we can see our device here. Group membership, got Android work devices. Now, if we look under app configuration, uh, filter, haven't got many on their managed apps. All right, these are required installs. So this is waiting for install status. So that's basically the next time my device checks in with the server, it's going to tell it that it's got apps that are waiting to be installed and it will automatically install them on my device. Uh, so if I hit sync, right. and if I, I mean, you can't see me doing this on my device. Um, okay, looks like I don't have to actually do anything. It's updating on its own. So on my device, I can see notifications. 365 successfully installed, OneNote successfully installed. I have a little lock icon next to, uh, well, it's like a briefcase lock thing just to indicate that it's a work profile app I'm signing into Intune on my device anyway let's see sync cool so I've just manually synced it from my phone as well so this information this can take a little while to update. Rule of thumb with um, Intune, give it about 30 minutes for anything minor. Anything major, give it 24 hours. Right, if we come over here to our devices and come to enroll devices, we get our different enrollment types. So you know, we can configure Windows Hello. Um, you know, it's not configured. We can say, yeah, you're allowed. TPM and tell it we prefer it. Minimum pin length. I like to just have four. Yeah, you can say required, or you can just say allowed, and then pin expiration, and you can set it. I mean, if you want to discourage your users from using the pin and then constantly asking you if they're allowed to have a pin, you're like, sure, and set it for one day, and then they've got to set a new pin every day. 
Yeah, it's just hilarious. They get so angry and want it gone. Um, you can set it all the way up to 730 days, which is something like, what, two years. But uh, me personally, I'll just put it up. Never. Uh, remember pin history? You can tell it to remember the 50 last pins. <laughs> Use enhanced anti-spoofing when available? Yes. So, uh, what that does, the anti-spoofing, um, that's if you get the password incorrect too many times, you'll have to pass a challenge on the lock screen. Okay, we can enable the use of security keys. Allow phone sign in. Done. Save. All right, so that's for everybody. That's how we configure that. I mean, you don't have to use these exact settings. Check. You can turn it off if you want. Just have it gone forever. Uh, the enrollment status page. Right. So this is a default. All users and all devices. Right. We don't need to actually do anything with that. Co-management, you've only got to worry about it if you've got another, like another, uh, like a software device management program such as Manage Engine or N Central or one of thousands of others out there. Autopilot, don't have to worry about it until later. Uh, I'm going to set up a couple of virtual machines and we will go through the autopilot in another lesson. It's not necessary. Automatic enrollment. Now, yours may or may not already be on, but all you really have to do, like if it's off, you just kind of have to tick these two over to all. These are all pre filled. Those are the, like, if, if you don't know what these uh, URLs are going to, you won't have to ever worry about them. But they, the, this checks, like this one just checks within Intune. Is the device compliant? This is the discovery URL. So when you enroll the device, it looks up that when and that's just the terms of use. I mean, big deal. Um, no, nobody ever follows them. But yeah, you just tick them over, hit save, and you're done. Now, to actually enroll your device, bear in mind this will kill will not kill your current profile it will create you a new profile when you go sign in so when we enroll our device i'm going to sign in with my regular user account because um yeah you want to operate with the least amount of privileges possible and then elevate when necessary. Uh, right. But I'm going to wind up with a completely different profile. Uh, I'm going to have to. Uh, it does require a restart when you do it, but let's say 
I'm enrolling into Azure AD. Uh, there are other ways you can get into um, into Intune, but personally, I don't want to have a local domain joined computer. Just on the off chance that because the hardware I've got that virtual machine running on it's not very reliable um, it's had a bit of a rough life I, I'm being kind when I say it's had a rough life uh, the previous owner wasn't too kind to it um, and yeah it's a bit long in the tooth now pretty old so I don't put anything that I actually care about on there. It's literally just a playground for me at home. Um, but my computer, on the other hand, is where I do all my gaming and stuff. So I don't want to put the ability to log in I don't want that relying on something that could fail. I'm not saying that Azure AD is 100% um, it's just it's got a higher availability than what my server may have in another year or two. So how you do it is up to you. Um, domain joining is quite easy, so we just go work or school, bring up this account info here, connect. Now, if you want to go to your domain, join this device to a local active directory, All right? Put in your domain name, sorry, and sign in with whatever your admin account is, just to authenticate it. I don't want that. I want Azure Active Directory. So I'm going to sign in with my admin account. It doesn't have to be an admin account. You can actually enroll it with any user account providing they've got a license right actually i don't know if i have to configure it yeah so create elevated da 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 da. Make sure this is your org. All right. If you've got a custom domain and you've joined it, it will be in place of there. And if you join, like if you add your custom domain at a later date, then this is still a valid domain. Like it, it actually is still a valid domain. And it's pretty good like that. All right, you click on join. Once you've verified that you are joining All right, and this will restart. Uh, I'm not going to be able to keep this same recording going. All right, but that's it. It's set. Done. Oh, hang on. Uh, select your current account and then switch account. Maybe we don't need to restart. I know when you do local domain, you do need to 
I generally restart just for the hell of it, but um, uh, let's see. If the video keeps going, I don't know if this is going to keep recording while I do this. But um, I'm just going to give it a shot. Okay, so that didn't continue recording like I, I thought it wouldn't. But hey, you never know. So um, I've gone to C slash users. You can see here's the new profile that's been created. Now, it does say two, six past two a.m. We can see that it's actually six twenty-three p.m. Uh, that's because it gets the time from here. So your Azure Active Directory time, basically. Uh, I can't recall off the top of my head where you can see the time or where you set the time. But just know that if your times are off, then um, this is in UTC time. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what? Okay, I wasn't going to come to this part. <clears throat> but may as well while we are here just enable this so what this does you can set someone as an owner of a group and um, they don't have to have any special admin privileges to be able to manage the group uh, it's probably from an IT perspective <laughs> it's, most likely the best thing you can do. Um, people will still email the help desk wanting you to modify groups and stuff, but hey, if you work for an MSP, <laughs> that's all good. Um, if they start complaining because, you know, oh, we have to pay every time. Well, no, you don't actually. It's just that you are so freaking ignorant to what you use every single day, you don't even understand what it is that you're using. You could have modified these memberships this whole time. But, you know, people don't like being told that they're ignorant. Now, <clears throat> group expiration. Right, so <laughs> what this will do <laughs> you have to have right you can set these or put a custom value or leave it as nothing. If you leave it as nothing, then the groups will never ever expire. That's the preferred way of doing it, but then if you allow people to create their own teams, that will come up in another lesson, but if you allow people to create your own teams, you will have so many groups that you will eventually want them to just expire. Because then that way, <laughs> if um, yeah, you, you can add them in manually as well. So, like you see all the 
basically once a month you go through do an audit um, you see a bunch of new teams pop up and it's just crap where like you know one person is messaging another so like, why did you create a team instead of just doing a chat <clears throat> so that's a way that you can clean up all of that better way is to just not allow them to create their own teams and then make them submit a um submit a form basically on what they would like and why they need it <laughs> naming policies so you can you know because you can have people put in things like if you're in a professional environment I mean, you would at least hope most people would put things that aren't unprofessional names like slurs and stuff I mean I personally couldn't care. I'll just see it and go, yeah, whatever you talks. But there are other people out there in the workforce who will get offended by it. <clears throat> and yeah, you can preemptively avoid things by adding a blocked word list. And then, you know, it's like, <laughs> you, you don't want a team in your work environment called the Proud Boys or something stupid like that, you know. You, know, you can edit things here. You're all good. Uh, I've gone and sidetracked myself again. I was actually wanting to come to the devices overview. Probably a good thing I distracted myself because it gave it a bit of time to sync. Right, so now we can see we've got my PC in there. I'm the owner of it and it's enrolled under Microsoft Intune. So I can come over to my devices. Now I've got one Windows device in there. All right. And then we do the same thing again. That compliance policies, config profiles. Now we can also run <coughs> PowerShell scripts and set our update rings, feature updates, quality updates, and driver update configurations. All right, so I had to just trash what I was showing for because um, with this device being previously tied to an AD and a Jure AD and not being able to access it to remove it properly some of my profiles are a bit dodgy uh, like this one for example uh, I can't even delete it <laughs> okay but it goes through it says it deleted But, um, oh yeah, that oh, you got rid of more of it. That used to be very, very deep. That was about probably twenty folders deep, and I was just renaming them to one, 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 trying to um, eventually get rid of the folder altogether. Um, so I had to delete. 
profiles that didn't even exist anymore. Yeah, um, when you take a look here, work or school, we can see that I'm connected here. It's picked up my domain username, like my local domain username. It's put me as a local device administrator. Now, there is a setting that you can choose so that when a device is Azure AD joined, uh, that user, you can either have them the local administrator of just that device, has its drawbacks, such as it allows them to install whatever the hell they want, and giving dumb people, like in an organisation, you give dumb people admin rights, they just click through everything, and you'll be doing virus removals like once a month, most likely. Uh, the other drawback, you get the hobbyists who think they know what they're doing because they fixed their grandma's laptop one, one time, you know, and their uncle recommended them to someone and they got paid 50 bucks one time for reinstalling Windows on someone's machine. Um, these are like, <laughs> I like to refer to them as low power users, because they're like, in the power user sense, they do a lot of stupid crap in the registry. Little tweaks and this and that. But you don't want that in an enterprise network because it just creates more work for you than it's worth. The only time you should be editing registry is <clears throat> if you are placing specific keys for specific enterprise level stuff. Um, so yeah, in order to bring my profile across, I had this one, it's got all my stuff in it. Uh, you may be able to just click through, you may have to take control, like give admin access to it. And just control A, come back to your real profile, you know, copy, paste, bring all that stuff across. Now the reason you do it as the account that's signed in is because there will be specific files and folders that are open at the time that you copy this stuff over. You do not want to overwrite them with another profile's version of them. So logging out as admin, <clears throat> grabbing it all, bringing it across, you're going to corrupt the crap out of your app data folder. And it's, you're just going to have not a good time. So better off doing it that way and just don't overwrite anything. Just tell it to skip. And yeah, I will see you in the next lesson. We just have a few things left to sync. And then this will go away. But until then. <clears throat>